Hi there folks, my name is FallenBrass15. Today I decided to make a video on reloading. This video is going to be titled, Reloading for Beginners, the Basics, for certain reasons. Today I'm just going to be reloading 223. This cartridge is not often reloaded, but today I'm just reloading it so you can get the understanding and know-how of reloading. Oh, and I'll put a link down in the description below, as, or should I say links, down in the description below for a reloading press, a good one for beginners, a case lube pad, and also a case tumbler. And always wear your safety glasses. Let's get started. Okay. To get started, you'll need your reloading press, which is right here. you also need a bullet. This is your uh, shell holder right here. Let me pop, it, pop this thing out here for you guys to see it. This is what it looks like. Here, this is for your shells. Make sure you have the right one that goes to your specific caliber and you'll need dies. Here are your dies. This is this one here is for seeding your bullet and this one right here is for depriming and also reshaping your bullet so you can use it for reloading. Uh, reshaping your shell, excuse me. This right here is these are 22 caliber bullets made by Hornady. They're 55 grain full metal jacket boat tails. There's 100 of them in there. And that's what we're going to be using in our loads today. Today, and for powder wise, we're going to be using IMR 4198 smokeless powder. Do not mistake this with commonly Pyrodex or black powder substitutes because this will not work. Okay, right here, you also need a scale. Right here, I have a digital scale. You can use an old fashioned scale, but I just have this one, so this is the one I'm going to be using. And you'll also need a powder trickler. This is for precise loads, so you can just get to a certain amount. You'll also need shells, spent casings. You need them. And this is what they look like before. They have your primer in there. They're, they haven't been reshaped yet. And also, they've been cleaned with a brass polisher with the case tumbler. Excuse me. A case tumbler and that uses crushed up corn cob to clean it. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let's get started. Reload. First things first, we'll need to set our die. The die that we're going to be setting first is going to be our resizing and depriming die. This is what it looks like. Just so you know, you want this little prong sticking out of the bottom to be sticking out about three sixteenths of an inch. And if you don't have a tape measure, you can stack two quarters, and if it just passed the two quarters, you're good to go. So, first thing that we need to do, we need to lower down the arm, and we need to start threading this in. We thread this in until it hits the bar that comes up from the reloading press. We just hit the bar, so we're good to go. We thread our locking nut down, and then we raise back up our arm and we just give it a hair more of a turn so we get a camming action so this gives us the pressure to uh, to deprime our shells and resize them. This is what the camming action is going to look like. See how we're getting a springy tension? That's just what you want. Just like that. So after we get our die set in, you get the locking nut put into place and I forgot to mention this but there is a locking screw right here that you tighten down. Tighten this down to keep your die from moving afterwards. Next thing to get out would be our case lube pad. Get our case lube pad. Here's our case lube, case lube tube from RCBS. And we get a, a shot round, a shot shell that we haven't deprimed or reshaped yet. So what we do next is we take our case lube, and we put it on the pad. And you want to put it in like a zigzag pattern right across it. That'll be good for now. And then we take our fingers and we rub it across. Looks good. And we take our shell here and we just roll it around. So we get nice and lubed up. The reason for this case lube is so when we're using our press, that it doesn't get stuck or jammed in it. So now we're good to go. So what we do now is we put it in our shell holder, 
Just like so. There it is, it's in our shell holder. Make sure it's all the way forward. And then we just simply pull down. And there went our primer. Now it's deprimed and reshaped. And you can do this on every single one. You gotta roll it. Slide it in your shell holder and go up. And you have to get the camming action too to reach it beside the shell. Just like that. So far we have two done. So let, let me do our third. Rolled around. Slide it in. And we just pull up. And wait for the cami action to kick in. There it goes. And push it back up. And that's how you deprime and resize your shelves. The next step after depriming and resizing our shelves is to put in our primers. I'm going to be using CCI Small Rifle Primers, number 400. And I have three of them right here for our three shells that we did. So what you do is first is you take your shell. Put it right back in your shell holder. You lift it up. And then you lift this right here. This is your primer. It's your primer tool. And then you take your primer and set it in there. You set it in there so the side here, this is the side that goes into the shell. It's very important to know. And then all you do then is just pull down, push forward, and You'll have a click. Just like this one. And there you go. It's primed. Let's do it on two more. Take your shell. Put it in your shell holder. Now lift it up. Grab your primer. Put it in your priming tool. Make sure it's the right way in there, which it is. This is what the right way looks. Looks just like that. All you do is you just push forward. And I believe it's in. It's in. And there you go. There's another one primed. Third one, same thing. Put it in your shelf holder. Get your primer. Put it in the right way. And just push forward. And it's primed. There's our three shells primed and ready to go. Next thing needs to do is to get our powder in. You'll need your powder trickler, one teaspoon, a small bowl, your scale, your pan, and a funnel. This is a black powder funnel, so this is what I have and this is what I'm going to be using. And most importantly, your powder. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our powder. Our powder is IMR 4198 smokeless powder. We're going to pour it into the bowl. Next, we're going to put some in the powder trickler. And we're going to turn on our scale. We're going to wait for it to zero it out, which it just did. 
you're going to put your pan on it and then you're going to zero it out with the pan on it so it's as if the pan weighs nothing now you take your powder and we're going to measure it to 19.1 grains because that's the max load that you can use of the IMR 4198 smokeless powder make sure you know your limits of your grains for your each powder that you use because there's different powders and it varies okay pouring it in there right now I'm at 17.1 19.2 so I want a little over I'm going to dump a little in here I'm at 19, so I get my powder trickler. Actually, now it's at 18.9, it it's evening out. I'm gonna put a little in there. It's gonna take a minute until I start getting powder at the end of it. Okay, this is for precise. That's what the powder trickler is for, is to get it to the exact grain that you need it, which I'm at right now, I'm at 19.1. So next thing is to do this, you take your shell and put it in your shell holder. This is a shell holding tray. And we take our powder and we're going to take our funnel over here, put it around the shell head, put it in there, and just pour our powder in. Powder is in. Let's do one more. Okay. So we put our pan back on. Wait for it to zero out. It is zeroed. And then we take our powder and do the same thing over again. We're at 11.5. 15, 16, 17, now we're at 17.2, 8 8 18.3, 19.6, I want over again, so I'm going to dump a little out, I'm at 18.5, that's perfect, and I can just use my powder trickler to get to 19.1, which is our desired grain. Now we're at 19.1. I'm going to take my, going to take my uh, pan, grab a new shell, put it in my shell holder. Make sure you do not double charge your shell, your load, because that will not be good, if you can imagine. We put our funnel back on, and we do the same thing. I'm going to do the third one off camera so not to bore you guys. Next up is to remove your shaping die, your depriming and shaping die. First, you take your Allen key and loosen up your set screw, which is, loosen it from here just a hair, lower down your arm, and you, unlo you loosen your die all the way and take it out. Now we're going to put in our bolt seating die. It threads in just like this. And I think we're good to go. After the powder is in our shells, 
to grab our bullets. These are Hornady 22 calibers, full metal jacket boat tails. They're 55 grain bullets, and we're going to take them. And we're going to put a bullet in each neck of the shell. I didn't do this in the video, but it would be a good idea when you're charging them and you have them in your tray to put the bolt on top of them to tell if you already charged it or not, so you don't forget. Then, you take your bullet and you put it in your shell holder. And let me get this out of the way for you guys. You can see it's a little crooked on there, but it automatically straightens it out when you go to seed it. So you go up like this, and we haven't seeded it all the way. We need to still go down, because there's a line on the bolts to see where you need to seed it at. We'll try it now. And we'll see where we're at. Well, you take your digital caliper, and we want it at most 2.2. That's where we want it at. So let me do that. And we're waiting for it to zero. I'm at 2.7140, so I did it a little too small. So let's redo that one, let's raise up this. Let's just do it a hair more. See what this one's at. We are at two one nine zero zero. We're closer. So let's raise it up just a hair more. bolt fell out there. Good thing I caught it. So we put it in there. Set our bolt on top. Again, it doesn't matter if the bolt's straight because this this die automatically straightens it out. See where we're at on the digital caliper. You gotta re-zero it. It looks like it got off. Okay, let's get back it back out. We're at 20190, so we're good. As long as it's underneath your 2.2, you're good. That concludes my video. I hope you guys liked it. Yeah, I hope it was helpful. Like, comment below. Fallen Brass 15, 